Welcome everyone, c'est un plaisir de vous retrouver pour un autre trimestre de séminaire de mathématiques physique. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you back to another semester of math physics seminars. Um, this semester, uh, maybe the density will be a bit lower than usual because we have also this uh, thematic semester that's running on uh, algebra and symmetries uh, and for other reasons, but I'm glad that we have uh, a talk early in the season. So uh, thank you, Vasilia, for proposing the speaker, and thank you, uh, Julian, for accepting. So uh, without further ado, uh, let me introduce the speaker. So today we'll hear from uh, Julian Baragan, who's a postdoctoral fellow at Sherbrooke University. Um, and he will tell us about gravity, and in particular about quasi-normal mode solutions via isomonodromy. So uh, thank you, Julian, for kicking off the semester. William? Yes. I'm sorry, but the, uh, I, I think I lost connection for a few seconds. But it doesn't matter. I just said that it's, uh, you can begin the talk. OK, so it was a dramatic pause. That's uh, right. <laughs> OK. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, Professor Vasilisa and Marco Bertola and Dimitri Karotkin for the for the support during this year. Uh, also, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity of presenting this work. Um, yeah, I will try to explain the, the connection between quasi-normal modes and the method of isomonodromic deformations. So um, I, I, will, I will try to motivate a bit the outline of this talk. So I will begin by um, presenting the connection between isomonodromic deformations the pine level six equation and the Hoyne equation. Then I, I will use the, the key formula for the pine level six tau function to recast the, the boundary value problem of, the, of a radial Hoyne equation in terms of an initial value problem for the uh, isomonodromic tau function. This is the, the first part of the talk. And then the second part, I will try to, uh, to present the, the actual computation of the quasi-normal modes, at least for the S mode in the small radius limit. And finally, I will, I will conclude and I will present some future perspective. Uh, so, um, okay, this uh, quasi-normal modes is at least a 50 years old problem. And we can take our favorite method and then uh, compute them. Say we can use WKB uh, approximation or we can use numerics like uh, the continued fraction method or the two the spectral methods. But I think that with the method of the isomonodromic deformations, we can, we can explore the, for sure, the analytic structure of the accessory parameter, but also we can compute uh, asymptotic expansion for the eigenfrequencies. Um, also, we can explore different limits in terms of the pine level transcendence, in terms of the confluent limits of the pine level transcendence. So, uh, if time allows, I will discuss briefly uh, the confluent limit of the pine level six to the pine level five, how this is related with the near extremal black hole limit. And then uh, if, for instance, if you consider, I mean, here we will talk about the serial representation of the isomonodromic uh, tau function. But if you consider, for instance, the Fredholm determinant uh, representations, you, you will, for sure, you will uh, decrease the amount of computational effort demanded to, to, to solve the, or to find the quasi-normal modes numerically. So this is the basic arena. I, I think here most of the audience are familiar with the, with the linear system, but I will try to be as much as specific I can. So we will consider a two by two Fuchsian linear system with four regular singular points on the Riemann sphere. 
since this is a Fuchsian system, um, A has a specific form, which only contains uh, simple poles, and the matrices, are, the, the racial matrices are traceless, and they don't depend on Z. And as a consequence of the isomonodromic condition, uh, or essentially, if we we ask ourselves um, if we allow the poles to move, how must the residue matrices? How must they change uh, while keeping the the monodromy representation invariant? Uh, we we find that they have to satisfy the Schlesinger equations. The this, the, this, the Schlesinger system is also it, it comes from also from a zero curvature condition, and the last the last equation essentially tell us that the the a infinity matrix is a is a constant matrix. So by conjugation we can assume that the a infinity matrix is just a diagonal matrix um, the later requirement i would say that it imposes a, a, a constraint in one of the entries of the of the az matrix and meaning that the the one of the of diagonal elements it has a, a, a only one zero in the complex plane at C equals lambda. And surprisingly, lambda as a function of the location of the pole at, at C equal T, so lambda dt satisfies, will satisfy the, the finally the six equation where the theta not theta one and theta t are just the eigenvalues of the residue matrices. Um, the finally the six equation for lambda Therefore, is the isomonodromic deformation equation of the two by two Fuchsian linear system for, for four regular singular points on the Riemann sphere. So, but this is not the whole story. There is an underlying structure that I will try to make manifest. And the idea is that if we, we analyze the, the second order scalar equation for one of the entries of the fundamental metric solution. Uh, we notice that uh, it satisfies the equation in seven. And then with massaging a bit the equation, you can find that this reduces to, to, to equation eight. This particular equation is called the deformed Hoyn equation because it contains an extra singularity, lambda. But here in this case, lambda is an apparent singularity. So it, uh, its critical exponents or its characteristic exponents are integers and then the monodromy around the, the apparent singularity is trivial. Um, we will see that lambda, k and mu, they, they satisfy an algebraic relation and actually, Lambda and mu, they can be taught as, um, as a canonical variables for a Hamiltonian system. So mu is the canonical variable conjugate to lambda. And k is the, is the, is the Hamiltonian of the pine level six. So this is a dynamical system, which is also called the Daniel system. And the idea of of this story is that we are going to consider initial conditions for this Hamiltonian system. If we, if we set the following uh, initial conditions for the isomonodromic flow, say that at t equals c naught lambda, uh, which depends on t goes like c naught and mu goes like k zero over, well, this is just theta, T, one minus theta, theta t, and, the, and 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 we identify the a shift in the monodrom in the monodromies. We can recover uh, a Hoyne equation, meaning that uh, we we only have uh, a second order differential equation with four regular singular points, 
located at z, uh, zero, c not one and infinity, and the accessory parameter k zero. So c not is is just the position of the of the fourth singular point that you cannot fix by a Mobius transformation. Sometimes it's also called the deformation parameter. This is mainly the idea. Now we have we, we have two initial conditions. We assume that these are the, the, the mu and lambda are solutions of the prime level six equation. Then they can be written in terms of the monodromy data. It was I, I think it was Jimbo that shown that the near near to the critical points, the leading term of the solution is described by two by two complex parameters that play the role of, of, of uh, integration constants. So here by, by, log, uh, by monodromy data, we are thinking about the uh, Riemann sphere with four punctures. So the monodromy data are related with the uh, monodromy around one singular point uh, and the composite monodromy which are related with the analytic continu continuation around two uh, singular points. So we, we have four uh, local monodromies and we have three composite monodromies. And then just, uh, we know that we can use also the, the Fricke Jimbo equation to, to kill one of the of the composite monodromies and then we we just have a, I mean if we fix the monodromies we only need two uh, we we have only two parameters to describe this manifold and we will call sigma and s instead of sigma zero t and sigma t1 so these are the two comp, uh, these are the two integration constant that uh, will solve the riemann hilbert map so just uh -huh. and and then it's, it's natural and convenient to define a tau function an isomonotonic tau function because uh, as i said it, it it will contain the two uh, the two parameters that we need so we define an, an isomonotonic tau function in the jimbo miwa bueno sense so just trace of the I think it's the square of the trace. And it's not easy, but we can convince that the initial condition for the Garnier system can be translated into two initial conditions for the isomonodromic tau function. The first condition is for the tau function, it's a zero of the tau function. And the second condition is the log derivative of the tau function, which is related to the accessory parameter of the Hoyne equation. And the, the thetas are, are the are the monod the local monodromies, and just by this minus it means that the that we need to keep uh, the the shift in the in the theta c and in theta inf infinity. So these are the two conditions that you can implement into the computer and solve them numerically, but then uh, instead we will try to use the the key formula to, 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 to get uh, analytic expansion for the accessory parameter and eventually for the quasi-normal modes. So I think since 10 years ago, uh, Gamay and Yorgov and Lisovi, they, they wrote a, series, a complete civil representation of the fine level six star function. Uh, written in terms of the of the Vira Soro conformal blocks with c equals to one, and where the thetas are again are the, the local monodromy parameters, and s and and sigma are the are the the two integration constant. Uh, c is just the structural constants; they are given in terms of Barn functions, but the Interesting thing is that we can we can we can introduce the tau function in the initial conditions, and we can get sort of an expansion for s when c zero is small, and then we we, we take twenty two 
and put it in the in the equation for the accessory parameter uh, to get um, to obtain um, an analytic expansion for the accessory parameter in terms of the monodromy data, and this is an analytic expansion in powers of C naught, and we see that I mean that there is a, a pole structure uh, in the denominators, but uh, the the numerators of the of the coefficients that are uh, in in each power they are just uh, functions of the of the monod of the local monodromies and sigma. So um, the equation for S and the asymptotic expansion for the accessory parameter, they provide a map with the, with the Hoyne equation, means that we can relate the deformation parameter and the accessory parameter of the Hoyne equation with sigma and S. So these two equations, they present like a formal solution for the eigenvalue problem of a Fuchsian ODE with, with four regular uh, singular points, but also it, it can be extended to, to other systems, like um, instead of having a, a Hoyne equation, you can study also a confluent Hoyne equation, and, and then you, you will see that, that you need to introduce the pine level five tau function instead of the pine level six. So, um, well, is there any question that I could answer before I introduce the scalar perturbations. So now the idea, let me just briefly discuss the, the Reisner Nostrum ADS black hole. This is a static uh, static uh, solution with uh, negative cosmological constant. I mean, this is a solution of uh, Einstein Maxwell gravity with a negative cosmological constant. This is a black hole with uh, parameterized by the mass and the charge and the position of the horizons are located at the R plus, R minus, and uh, R zero. So I will treat the, instead of the radial coordinate, I will treat the square of R, no, R square, sorry. And then um, here is you have the, the just the, the angular part, which is the unit, the three sphere. So you have a you have a, a gauge field, which is I mean we have we want we want only uh, we only have the AT component because we have a, a U one symmetry, and uh, C is vanishes because we want a, a solution that a potential that uh, decays at at infinity. And Q, Q can be parameterized in terms of the other horizon and an extremality parameter, the small Q. Small Q is, is between zero and one. And then if Q is, is one, uh, we, we have the, the extremal black hole. So the temperature is zero, but we are going to consider, uh, mostly we will consider uh, black holes with high temperature. So the idea now is we, we will study the klein gordon equation in, in, the, in, in a fixed background. So in the reisner nostrum ADS5, this is a complex scalar field, but then we will just consider the real part. And then we need to promote the covariant derivatives, introduce the, the gauge field and the E and mu are the charge and the mass of the field. So this the Klein Gordon equation can be separated by, by, the, by the following answers, where Y L uh, defines the spherical harmonics on the on the three sphere. And we have just um, I mean the the, the, the the we are considering stationary solutions, so the and we have a killing vector on the on the time coordinate. So the, the solution for the time is just an exponential. But then we have a, a, a when we decouple the the Klein Gordon equation, we get, we get a rate an angular differential equation and a radial differential equation. 
for the angular, we, we know that it, was, it would satisfy the, uh, the eigenvalue equation for the spherical harmonics. So we, we get the, the angular momentum quantum number. And then we introduce the angular eigenvalues into the radial equation, because this is essentially the separation constant, actually. So the, the radial equation is, is a, it, it has four regular singular points uh, located at the roots of delta r and then an, at infinity. And if we analyze the, the behavior of the, of the Frobenius solutions, the asymptotic behavior, we, we, find, we find the, the local monodromies. I mean, we find a relation between the characteristic exponents of the initial exponents and the local monodromies. So where the thetas, the theta k, are, are related to the, to the variation of the entropy at, at each horizon. So if we consider the theta plus, this is the, the variation of the entropy when the black hole absorbs a quanta, the frequency and the frequency, and then also when it absorbs the electric charge. And the T is the temperature of the black hole. Uh, theta infinity is related with the conformal dimension of the, of the CFT at the boundary. So it's related with the ADS5 and it's just given by the mass. We can transform 32 into the Hoyne form. And in order to do that, we, we treat the, the radial coordinate or the R square as a complex variable. And then we, we, we perform a Mobius transformation and uh, S homotopic transformation to obtain an equation for F. And F is, you see F is already in the, in the canonical form of the Hoyne equation. So K naught is the accessory parameter. Um, Z naught is just the, as I said, the position of the of the singular point that you cannot fix by Mobius, by a Mobius transformation, and then kappa one and kappa two are just related, are written just in terms of the of the local monodromies. So now we need to impose the boundary condition for the quasi-normal mode. Sorry, uh, C naught is just the difference between the separation so between the difference between the the horizons, and well, K naught is just it contains uh, the separation constant and also the local monodromies. For the, for the boundary value problem, uh, if we want to consider quasi-normal mode solution, we need to specify the boundary conditions uh, in the sense that at the horizon, we have an incoming wave and at infinity, we have, uh, we have a regularity. So the scattering problem is between between C, C naught and, and the spatial infinity, which is, 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 is fixed at, at C equals one. And, and F is a regular function at the boundary. So the, the, the profile of the solution, it has to be with the minus theta plus, and then uh, at infinity, you have this, uh, you have essentially uh, one over the square root of four plus uh, m square or mu square. But in terms of the in terms of the monodromy data, or in terms of the so because we have we have an expansion for the accessory parameter, but the left hand side is given by the actual radial uh, accessory parameter. So this is the 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 k zero that I just a few slides ago, and then we need to identify what are the monodromy parameters. So the the thetas the theta zero theta t and theta one how are related with the with the characteristic exponents of the solutions, and 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 also we need to we need to implement the boundary conditions, and this is given by the by the composite monodromy between the between between t and one or between the horizon and the infinity. 
So we found that the composite monodromy around the two single, these two singular points has to be the sum of the local monodromy. This is a condition for the quasi-normal modes. I mean, if you write this in terms of the of the connection matrices, it means that one of the entries of the connection matrix vanishes. So essentially, you have a, you have a, a triangular matrix. This boundary condition will impose a constraint into the S. And as I mentioned before, the S can be can be can be obtained by solving the Fick and equation. So if we if we impose uh, this constraint for the for the composite monodromy, we we find we find that the the the, the non-trivial solution is the is the one given in forty two. So again, uh, now we have a, a an, we have a new expression for S, and we will we will equate both both sides to obtain the quasi-normal mode. Let me see if I can be specific in what I meant. So for the case of, of, of small black holes, the small radius limit, we, we know that the C naught is a small parameter. So we can essentially, we can use the, the series representation of the, of the tau function near to zero and the temperature it goes it goes like one over r plus so again we will dealing with 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 uh, black holes at high temperature um we we reparameterize the small q by epsilon which is just mean that when when q is close to extremality so epsilon is it goes to zero so for the for the high temperature quasi normal modes what we do is we expand for a small r plus. So we expand all the thetas and we assume that the composite monodromy, we can compute the composite monodromy perturbatively. But the thing is, it's problematic because you want to invert, because uh, essentially due to the pole structure of the, of the accessory parameter. So what we found is that there is a scaling limit there. And then if we, assume that the composite monodromy has this structure, we can, we can circumvent the, we can, yeah, we can circumvent the problem of the, of the pole structure for the, for at least for the S wave case. So, I mean, I will, I will try to, to show you uh, the L0 computation. So for the L0 case, what we do is, uh, we expand the, 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 the radial accessory parameter, which is the one in 49. And then we expand the accessory parameter given in terms of the monodromy data. And then we note that uh, each power of C naught gives you a contribution uh, to the R plus square term. But the contribution that they give, they gave is, 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 is essentially is essentially a sequence of the Catalan numbers. We didn't prove exactly this statement, but I mean, we, we went up to seven order and well, the, I mean, the, the, the Catalan numbers were uh, appear. So we convinced ourselves that then we can use the, the, genera the generating function of the Catalan numbers and then we can we can find the the correction to the to the to sigma zero, so which is mu zero. So is I mean, if we go back to the analytic structure, I'm interested in computing the this this the new zero. So this is not very illuminating, but that uh, this is more or less how the procedure, how the computation is performed, and then we we replace. Uh, replace sigma into s, and again you see that the uh, you can again resume all the contributions in terms of the Catalan numbers, and then you get a, an, an s, which is at least the let's say the analytic part is given by fifty two, and this s is the one that we compare with the 
constrained one, the one which is with that implements the the, the radial quantization condition. And you have you have everything because you have an equation that depends only on the frequency, on omega. So we we assume that the, the, the omega can be written in terms of the normal frequencies for the empty ADS five plus a small correction of order r plus square. And then we just perturbed, we, we computed the, the correction. And well, this is the, the, the result for the, for the quasi-normal modes when L, when L equal to zero. And well, at least we, we reproduced the, some, uh, the literature. I mean, <laughs> when, when, when the charge of the field is large enough, we, we, we recover the, the super radiant instability that is predicted in the literature. And, and, and actually uh, we saw that the, there was a missing term in the, in the real part, I mean, in the R plus square. So that we found, and this is due to, due to the, uh, resumation that we, we, we did using the Catalan, the generating function of the Catalan numbers. So uh, for the, the low temperature limit, the story is pretty much the same. We, we instead, of, instead of considering just Q small and fixed, now we are considering that epsilon is much smaller than R plus, which is also much smaller than, than one. And then we perform a double series expansion. So we expand in epsilon and R plus. And the, the scaling limit that, that is displayed by theta plus and theta minus, very similar to the same one that is uh, that you find when you try to take the confluent limit from the prime level six to the prime level five. Instead of I mean, if you perform all the, all this, I mean, if you expand, you make the double series expansion for the accessory parameter and also for S, actually for the accessory parameter, you can see that the, the analytic structure is the same, the same one when you, when you, when you perform the computation for the pine level five tau function. So you, you get the, the same structure of the irregular conformal blocks for, for the, for the low temperature, we perform the double series expansion for in S and in, in K naught. We, we did the same thing. We resume all the terms in terms of the Catalan numbers, and then we obtain uh, uh, eigenfrequency for the, for the fundamental mode, which contains not only the, the the contribution of r plus square but also contains the, the first non-trivial contribution of the temperature so which is the is, is the one given by epsilon mm. we found also that this um th these frequencies are stable uh for 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 a charge that is smaller than two delta over the square root of three and if delta also satisfies the unitary bound. So the, essentially the, the contribution of the, or the leaning correction of epsilon is, is not strong enough to, to trigger any, any super radiant instabilities. So let me just briefly discuss the, how, the, how they, they fit the, the numerical and the, and the analytical results, so you can see that at least for for the small black holes, we we obtain a a reason, reasonable good precision. And okay, here the the the, the black hole is stable; they don't, they don't have any any super radiant window. And then just let me let me present the conclusions on the future perspective. We have seen that one, one can recast the boundary problem, the boundary value problem of the radial ODE in terms of an initial value problem for the pine level six tau function. 
Also, we, we have shown that the isomonodromy, isomonodromy method and gives you asymptotic expansion for the quasi-normal modes, and all these uh, frequencies will get contributions from all the descendants of the CFT primaries. So, um, because sigma is can be interpreted as the intermediate channel in the in the CFT description, but anyway, you can, can resum all these contributions in terms of the of the Catalan numbers. So for the L0 mode, the, we have a super radiance for large enough Q in the small black hole limit. And then for the, for the low temperature on the near extremal black holes, we, we have computed the, the first non-trivial correction in epsilon. And it turns out that the black holes are stable if the charge is smaller than two delta over the square root of three, which is the, the result that was in the literature. And let me just present some of the future perspective. This, uh, we would like to study the actual solution of the klein gordon equation to, to address uh, hydrodynamical properties in the holographic, in the, in, the, in the, I mean, in the framework of the ADS CFT correspondence. Um, this method also uh, can be applied to higher spin perturbations. So we can we can study we could study uh, Maxwell equations or, or fermionic fields in, in this background. And then uh, lately we we have been interested in in the scattering problem in the Kernium and the seated black hole because this is a black hole that uh, possesses five singularities, and then one can think of us uh, writing the boundary value problem in terms of the initial condition for a new Garnier system, which is a more complicated because you need to introduce two apparent singularities into the system. And again, in terms of the isomonodromic tau function, you, have, you need at least um, a different approach. So Perhaps you can use the the frame of determinant to solve the the initial the initial conditions. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Julian. A very nice talk. My pleasure. So the talk is now open to questions. Yeah, I think we have plenty of time. We have time for questions, which is mm -hmm. good. So I have questions. I always wait for the audience. So let me let me ask my question because I don't see any raised hands. Um, yeah, so you mentioned the ADS CFT correspondence, where these calculations are useful in studying, um, you know, like the response properties of the boundary CFT that's dual to this um, space time. So in this case, can you remind me for the the black hole that you're studying? Mm -hmm. So Reisner Nordstrom black hole. Um, so on the CFT side, this is dual to finite temperature quantum field theory. That's the horizon, but you also have the charge. Yes, you have a chemical potential. A chemical potential for the some conserved charged in the boundary CFT. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned at the end that. You can study higher spin fluctuations, and one of the first things people do always uh, is to, to look at the, the Maxwell perturbations you discussed. From that, you can get the connectivity. If you solve the this Hoyne equation, um, yeah, indeed, because there's some correspondence where you take the behavior of the gauge field near the ADS boundary. And from that, you can read off the response function of the dual quantum field theory. Um, that's something that, because people look at the poles and zeros of the response function, but the response mm -hmm. function is given by, uh, well, sorry, computer, please. <laughs> it's given by some, um, the gradient of the perturbation divided by the perturbation behavior of the gradient over the perturbation itself 
is that something that um, yeah. had become tractable in your formalism or have you looked at we, these we, we actually study uh, vector perturbation in K, in K like DS5. Mm -hmm. But we also we were interested again in the in the quasi normal modes. So, I mean, actually, because uh, the the separation of the Maxwell equation in 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 this in this type of backgrounds, mm -hmm. uh, the separation was, was I mean was known, uh, I think, six or five years ago by Lunin. At the end, when we decouple the equations, we obtain something similar to the Hoyne equation, but with an extra singularity. Then, I, I mean, you can give the, 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 the usual interpretation of the, of the quasi-normal modes in terms of the mass, of the masses of the DFT, I guess, but we never... Uh, which, which CFT now? Because I think in your talk, there were more than one CFT, I think, because... Uh, you mentioned at some point the CFT with respect to the tau function. This is, I'm guessing, some one plus one dimensional CFT with some Verrazzaro structure that's distinct from the dual CFT in terms of holography. Yes, they are different. Yes, they are different um, CFTs. So when you say mass of the CFT, because usually in CFT there's no mass mm -hmm. because the mass terms break scale invariance. The, the mass of the bulk scalar fields maps to the scaling dimensions in the CFT. So your scalar field, uh, you mentioned some unitarity bound. So this bound on the mass of the bulk scalar field comes from a bound on scaling dimensions from the boundary holographic. No, I, I understand. But I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, I mean, the quasi normal mass has an, has an holographic interpretation. Mm -hmm. I think these is are related with the pose of the retarded green function. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, besides of, of studying quasi normal modes, we, we never, we never start. I mean, that's an interesting question because if we can write, I mean, you can, if, if we can write the, the solution of the, of the Hoyne equation. Yeah, you can study, you can study things like the speed of sound for the, for the dual CFT. Because people also study the zeros of this retarded correlation functions, because it turns out, you know, when you have poles, you also have zeros and they interact as you change parameters. Um, but that's not something that um, you have looked at, the zeros, yeah. of these retarded correlations. Yeah. And yeah, so uh, let me see if there's another question. If not, I can ask another question myself. Good. So my second question, um, you developed some asymptotic expansion using this tau function, and this is the part maybe where I'm uh, less knowledgeable. Um, but using the tau function, can you learn something about these quasi normal modes, the poles, but for generic values of parameters, or do the values need to be small or large in some series expansion? Is there something that you can learn in a regime where uh, the parameters are finite, your, your uh, temperature, the charge. Uh, okay, uh, but this is related with the, with the which, we, which representation, I mean, you can expand the tau function around any of the three singular points. So if you, for instance, if you expand around zero, you are dealing with small black holes. But then I think when, when you expand around one, you could try to, to, to study different, different limits. Um, although the, 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 the two initial conditions are generic because, I mean, if, if uh, because this is just for t, t I mean, for t equals t, uh, c, z zero. It depends of the, of the representation of the tau function that you, you use. So we also study, for instance, for the angular case, we study also ultra spinning black holes. So, because we knew that then when we have uh, high, large angular velocities, uh, the, the parameter goes to, uh, is close to one. And so then we expand the tau function around. So we use all the machinery, but instead of using this, we use the, uh, yeah, the tau function uh, around one. But you always need to do an expansion. I mean, 
say you want to have the location of the poles at some generic values, then you need numerics probably to obtain it, or you know maybe you have to some high orders in the expansion of the tau function about some. You know, I was just curious whether there's some magic solution that you can get from the tau functions at some generic values of the parameters, because people rely on numerics. You know, you just as you mentioned in the beginning, use different methods and you can locate the, the poles and track them, but it's um, numerical. So these were my questions. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Are there other questions? So I don't see any hands raised. So let's thank again, Julian, for a very nice talk. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Oh, yeah, it was my pleasure. And uh, have a nice uh, evening and see you in the future, hopefully.